Hi, this is part two of our video on thermodynamics of steam. In this video, we're going to look at um, some steam tables and some of the information we can get out of steam tables. So in the previous video, what I illustrated was the idea that as we have temperature added to or heat added to molecules, our temperature rises. And really what's happening with the temperature rising is that the molecules themselves are starting to move around more and more and more. They rotate, they spin, they collide. Um, but it's this movement of molecules that's represented by temperature. So when we get finally to the point where we're adding in heat and heat and heat, sensible heat, so my temperature keeps rising, and then eventually what happens is my, my total amount of heat that I add in exceeds the limits of what these molecules can can hold to keep together and eventually the little bit of heat that I put in leads to a phase change so we get steam that escapes from the liquid or ice that melts into a liquid and so at that point what I'm doing is I'm adding in latent heat well there's a relationship between the temperature at which this phase change occurs and pressure. So if I think about um, what temperature does, well temperature is the movement of these molecules. The more temperature I have the more violent these the interaction is and the more likely it is to create steam. But on the other side what I have is pressure and pressure what it does is it acts on the molecules and it tends to want to keep them together. So the more temperature that I have, the more likely it is for steam to be produced from liquid. But the more pressure that I have, the less likely it is. So I have this battle always raging between temperature and pressure. And what we're going to see is that we have that relationship that exists inside of our steam tables. I have open right now a copy of one of my steam tables. So you can find these in the back of your academic supplement. You have three tables. There's two tables that look fairly similar. You have saturated steam, again, saturated meaning when I have a phase change that's occurring. So I have saturated steam temperature table, which is table two that I have open. You have saturated steam pressure table, which is table one. And then we also have superheated steam tables. So once I'm past the point of saturation and I'm into the point where I'm adding insensible heat to steam that's already been produced. Let's take a look at table two, your temperature table. What we're going to look at is the first two columns. And really what happens inside of these tables is I have, I'm arranged by some property and then what I have is a list of all the other properties that exist for steam. So I have stuff that is important to me like temperature and pressure, um, volume, internal energy, enthalpy and entropy, and we'll talk about those as you go through your courses. Um, what we're going to look at is just our first two columns here, so the relationship between temperature and pressure. Well. What is a temperature we know for boiling? Well, we know that water boils at 100 degrees. That's what we've learned uh, throughout our schooling. And so if we look at what we have here, it says that at a temperature of 100 degrees, what I have is a pressure of 101.35. Um, that's my standard atmospheric conditions. So a standard atmosphere pressure is 101.35. Uh, the whole temperature scale of degrees Celsius was created as the reference point of 100 being the boiling point at atmospheric conditions. So what I have is this relationship between temperature and pressure. As I said, as we increase the pressure, um, what we're going to need is a lot more temperature in order to overcome the pressure. So those guys always fight a battle. Let's go to the other table and take a look at that relationship. So 
This is my table one pressure table for saturated steam. Um, if I look at what happens here, uh, at now my first column is pressure as opposed to temperature. I have a pressure of about 100. We had 101.3 before, and it shows me about 100 degrees is the boiling point. Well, if I increase the pressure, say to 200, so double the amount of pressure, um, now what it shows me is that my temperature has gone up. I need a higher temperature in order to boil. We've seen this relationship before. Um, I'm just going to bring up um, our simulator. Okay, so here I have my simulation running. Pressure in my boiler is six bars of pressure, and my temperature is one about 165 degrees. Um, so if I let this run, what we're seeing is my pressure is increasing. And as you see the pressure increasing, not only is the pressure increasing, but also the temperature to go along with it is increasing. So I've gone up by almost a bar uh, in a moment here, and you can see I've gone up by uh, a few degrees. So let's take a look at an application of this. So say we had a boiler that's operating at a thousand kPa of pressure. Uh, a couple questions. What's the temperature of the water that's in the boiler if it's boiling? Uh, what's the temperature of the steam? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our steam tables and we're going to try and figure out what's happening there. Okay, so steam table I have here, what we're going to do, because the question is asking us in pressure, we're going to go to our table one, which is our pressure base table, and we're going to scroll down our pressure until we get to a pressure of 1000 kPa. Uh, what it tells me is that I have a temperature of 179.91. So temperature is equal to 179.91 degrees Celsius. What this is known as is my saturation temperature, sometimes known as TSAT. And what TSAT is, is it tells me the boiling point at a given pressure. So for a thousand kPa pressure, the boiling point, or the point where the battle between the temperature and the pressure holding it together is going to be balanced out, and I'm going to have a phase change. So So the question is, this is my TSAT, but what is that, right? Well, if I think about what's happening inside of my boiler, and here's my interface of, say, I don't know, steam and water, like, I don't know, in the, in the drum or something like that. Well, if my water is at 179.91, any steam that's coming off right at that interface is also going to be at that same temperature because that's where the saturation point occurs. So both the temperature of the water in the boiler is going to be that 179.91 as well as the 179.91. Steam could then further go past the boiler and get heated again, which would bring it into the superheated region. Um, but at the point where I have that transition, both are going to be at the same temperature. Okay, so let's go back to our simulator screen and see how we how we do. So if I look at my simulator screen, uh, what we saw uh, was that uh, we had a relationship between temperature and pressure. Uh, we see here my pressure is just slightly above 7 bar and looks like my temperature is about 171. So what I had was a 
my pressure was about 7 bar. And my temperature was about 171 degrees Celsius. Um, so what I've done is I've extracted two of those columns out of my tables, this time the, from the pressure table. You can see it's organized by pressure. Um, huh, a bar, this is KPA. Um, if we try to figure out what a bar is, um, one bar, a barometric pressure is what bar really stands for, is equal to 100 KPA. So this guy is about 700 KPA. Um, how do we do? Looks like 700 and, hmm, got a bit of a problem here. Um, 171 doesn't match up to this. Um, here, here's what's up. Um, actually, if you look at 800, it's about the 171. So looks like I got something wrong here. Actually, what's happening is when we read off the pressure inside of the boiler, um, what we have is what's known as gauge pressure. And gauge pressure is what we would read off of a gauge. So if the boiler had no pressure in it, it would show zero gauge pressure. Well, what the tables are all arranged in is absolute pressure. So even though I don't feel any pressure on my body right now, I know that there's air pressure that's acting on me, so my atmospheric pressure. And so what I have is a relationship between gauge pressure and atmospheric pressure and absolute pressure of um, my absolute is equal to my pressure gauge plus my pressure atmospheric. And and P atmospheric is, uh, again, what we saw in that last table is that 101.3 kPa. So my absolute pressure of the boiler that was operating was going to be my 7 bar, or about my 700 kPa, plus the 101.3 um, gives me about 800 uh, kPa. So what I want to make sure is that when I'm using my tables, I always want to use pressure in absolute. And as we saw in the simulator, matching up to about 800 kPa or a little bit over was giving me about the right value there, 171-ish degrees. So we got that relationship, and it looks like the simulator is... Um, following those rules.